Oh. Well, welcome back, everyone. Welcome to the first live of 2024 and the first live I've done for ages. Uh, in fact, the first live, I think the last time I went live was with Tommy Joe over on Anglesey. Um, the first live as well from the brand new, brand spanking new, awful HQ. So, and also the first time that I'm doing this live on the laptop. So, got a couple of people joining already. So, welcome everyone. Um, feel free to drop it in the chat. Um, this is going to be a bit of a Q&A session. So, like I say, you're joining me now live from the brand new Awful HQ. We, I've spent my Easter Sunday, hence the sweat, uh, dismantling and rebuilding flat pack furniture, um, which has been a dream of mine for a long, long time. So we literally moved in today. So um, it's been, yeah, it's been a mad month and a bit. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm not out fishing. Uh, the other reason I'm not out fishing is because, um, hey, Steve, is because uh, I broke my toe. <laughs> not long after the European Open, um, we well we've obviously moved house like i just said so we've had a lot of work to do to this house um before we could move in and one of the jobs was to do central heating and i dropped a radiator on my toe and shattered my toe so i've been hobbling around like a crook for the last two or three weeks now um so that's the other reason why i'm not out fishing so like i say we literally moved house today um 10 minutes ago, I was still assembling the bed. The bed's assembled, wardrobes are assembled, uh, and I've brought in to the garage. So, um, yeah, that's it. Got a few people. When's the next Holderness Coast session? That is a very good question. So, like I said, um, I broke my toe three weeks ago, I think it is, getting on for three weeks ago. Um, and I haven't been able to do much. Um, it's a it's classed as an open fracture, so basically there's bits of bone that's exposed. There's not a lot. It's the very tip of my toe as well. So if that like if that's the toe, it's it's literally like that bit above the nail that I've shattered. So the joint's actually okay, um, but there downwards is just shattered, um, and it's uh, yeah it's a bit of a mess. So I've been trying my best to keep it wrapped up and. Uh, away from any sort of infection because if I get an infection in the bone it's uh, it's pretty nasty um hopefully hopefully I'm I'm able to walk and stuff now I'm pottering about quite well um hopefully if my dad's up for it fancies taxiing we might try and get a session in later this week so like so we moved house today uh, I've got the rest of the I've got the rest of the week off um so if my dad's got some time off work, I might see if he fancies taxiing and uh, get us over onto the Holderness or the Mersey. I'm not sure yet because um, it still needs to be fairly accessible. Uh, so I'd like to get over on the Holderness. My best catch on the Holderness. Um, I've, had, I've had a couple of five pound cod. I'd. Uh, a seven pound ray that I was quite impressed with. That that was that's good going, I think, on the Holderness. Um and smooth hands. I think uh I had smooth hand up to about five or six pounds. I'm still chasing a double figure smooth hand and a double figure ray. So I think the ray is possibly gonna come from Holderness this this year. That's um that's one of the big ones. I still want to crack that that double figure ray. <laughs> Um, brownie points, yeah. I wish, mate. Brownie points seem to disappear very quickly. I am, hopefully, nobody minds. I am going to crack open a cold one because, uh, like I say, it's been a busy old day, and I need to hydrate and chill out and put my feet up a little bit. Tips for making the holder nest better, to be honest, this time of year and. 
if I'm going to do anything stupid like break a bone, this time of year is the ideal time to do it uh, because it's it's that weird phase between winter and spring. So hopefully, um, end of March, sort of April, April, May time, you tend to get like a spring run of cod. Um, so like I say, I think, I think the next spot that I'm going to be fishing, if my dad's up for taxiing me, will probably be the Mersey, I think, just because there's plenty of places where we can park and, you know, it's a short walk to the prom and fish there. It's comfortable fishing. I haven't got to worry about walking far and things like that. Um, but yeah, places like the Mersey where you've got rays pretty much all year round, um, it's all right. The Holden S, however, um, it's that weird, it's that, that really weird, horrible point between the the sort of bulk of the cod, and we've had a lot of haddock over there this year, um, coming to an end, and things like smooth hands and rays moving in. Let me move that down a little bit. There we go. Um, so tips for making it better. Work on your casting, I think, is the only thing I can I can suggest to you, really. The other tricky bit you've got with the Holder Ness is it changes week in, week out. So I'm not sure, Michael, whereabouts you live. If you're local... You need to be on the Holden S, like looking at marks constantly. Because I, every time I go up, whether it's a week, two weeks, or two or three months between spots, um, it's uh, yeah, it's it changes all the time. So I think work on your casting. If you can get a little bit distance, you stand better chance. Um, certainly at the minute, anyway. There's a obviously the the Europeans this year was won by a ray, um, so. The rays are there if you can hit them, um, but really for rays at this time of year, you need to be in big distance. So just just keep practicing on your casting, mate. Um, small aerodynamic baits, bait, bait presentation is key for me. I think um, on improving fishing uh, and having good quality baits. So obviously, if you've got good quality baits, you're presenting it well, and you you're doing as much as you can to improve on your casting. There's not really a great deal that you can do other than that. Um, I'm looking for a single figure any time so far. Uh, let's have a look. Ever fish West Wales, Paul? Um, I have. It depends what your class is West Wales. Barmouth's class is West Wales, isn't it? Um, so I've fished Barmouth a couple of times, and uh, what's the one over? Um, I can't remember what the name of the place over the other way, over the other side of it. But, yeah, Barmouth. Barmouth's um, a nice spot. Um, and then we worked our way down uh, around the peninsula, but we didn't really do much fishing. Um, but West Wales is another one where I want to try and head over to a bit more this year because one of the things that I do want to try and target this year is taupe. Um, so obviously there's plenty of places you can go for, but West Wales is um, is uh, is a good good spot. Press that in. I weigh in your eye. Uh, looking well, Alex. Thanks, mate. Uh, I feel like shit. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's been early mornings with Jack working all day and then coming here to do plumbing and rewiring and stuff like that. So sleep's been limited. Um, but we, like I say, we moved in today. So that's out of the way. Um, big tick in the box. I'm up to my balls in sea. Obviously fishing. Oh, cheers, Tommy, mate. You're making me feel really good there that uh, you're out fishing and I'm not. But... Um, yeah, congratulations on that bass as well, mate. That was a that looked like a cracking cracking fish. So, if anybody hasn't um, seen Tommy Joe's channel, fishing and country life for Tommy Joe, uh, his challenge he's got a, a rod that was his dad's, um, and his challenge this year is to catch a ten pound bass on the law on his dad's old rod. Um, he made a cracking start on it. I don't know if he's got the video up. To be honest, I haven't had time to blink today, um, so I don't know if that video is live or not. But I'm looking forward to seeing that one. I have had a sneak peek at some of the uh, some of the footage. Uh, what else we got, Chris? Have you got any more planned trips with Wayne? I haven't at the minute. Um, we did talk about more me and Wayne doing more trips. Uh, either him coming up north and visiting me, and I'll take him on a few marks. Um, obviously, the benefit of that is I haven't really got any marks, so we could go to the Old Nest. We could go to the Mersey. Uh, Anglesey was talked about as well. Obviously, Wayne's done a few sessions over there with the, the RF Valley guys. Um, so 
But yeah, we did talk about it. Uh, I'm not even sure. I couldn't tell you at the minute whether Wayne's in or out of the country. Um, I know he's back and forth to Norway a lot at the minute. Um, but uh, I did mean to drop him a message the other day uh, and just see how he's getting on um, and see if he is about. But like I say, hopefully my my plan for the start of the year was to, um, well, get moved into the house, which we've done, but um, to go after the place and stuff like that. So uh, and then I want to move back to the Rays. So my plan was to fish places like Mostyn. I keep... I've, I've got to get a nice fish from Mostyn at some point. Hold on. So, yeah, fish Mostyn. Um, I was going to head up to Morecambe Way, Fleetwood, places like that. Uh, head over there and do a little bit of fishing over there. Um, target place. And then uh, it was I was going to turn my attentions to uh, Rays and then on to Smooth Island and Tote. So I think my, let me try and find, I did have a little bit of a diary that I wrote down that I was going to go for. Let me try and find it. Can't find it. But, yeah, my plan was something like um, Mostyn, uh, Morecambe, Fleetwood, uh, Anglesey, then down onto the Bristol Channel and then try and get further south, maybe down towards Cornwall or uh, or even Chesil. But obviously Chesil has not been kind to me the last couple of times I've been there. Um, who else have we got online? Steve. Hi, mate. Uh, just booked two days wrecking from Whitby, end of June. Hey, there's some good boats come out of Whitby, to be fair. Um, some really good boats. I've been on a couple out of, uh, where did we sail out of? Uh, little harbour staves. Um, and yeah, some good, good fishing out there for the end of June. Yeah, that should be really good. Uh, looking forward to that. June, I will be in Ireland for two weeks. So I've booked two weeks over. Uh, we've booked the, the camper to go over there. So we've got the dogs with us, Sarah and Jack. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing some fishing over in Ireland as well. So Looking forward to that. Before then, actually, in May, we are going to Lanzarote. And I am currently debating whether to take big gear and go after some of the big stuff or, um, oh, where is it? Just had delivered today. I'll turn it this way around. I've not even opened this yet. I don't know if I've got any suitable utensils. It's a bit overkill, that, right? but. Get the old uh, get the old grips. So I ordered this because one of the things that I am mad keen on is uh, doing a little bit more light rod fishing. I tell you what. So I ordered a super light rod, um, and it said it was compact. I didn't expect it to be that compact. Um, so I'm not sure. Now I have ordered this. I ordered this on Amazon. Um, it's not a wish one. It came with uh, with good reviews. Let's have a look, actually. You can see this live. Apologies for the noise. While uh, while I open it up. So yeah, I am debating at the minute whether to take big gear and pay for excess baggage. Surely that is not a not a piece of rod. I'm scared to get this out. Um. Yeah, take the big gear and go after big stuff or to take super, super light stuff and just have a play around with some of the more exotic bits. Um, oh, my days. I know, I mean, I am not particularly blessed, but I think I have got hairs on my head that are thinner than that, thicker than that. So this is a 0.5 to 7 gram rod. Um, and I thought it was a four piece. I'm gonna have to check that they've sent me the right thing, actually. Yeah, Black Rock Ultra Light Compact Seven. I'm gonna check that they've sent that right because I thought it was a four piece, and that is definitely a two, four, six piece. But there we have it. So, which way up are we? That way up, that way up. 
ultra light, compact seven foot. Uh, I think that's what probably what I'm going to take to um, Lanzarote with me. But I'm looking forward to getting some micro species this year. Um, I need a new reel for it. I'm thinking probably the Akios Spyro, the little 3000, um, with some maybe sort of like 10 pound braid, something like that, really light. Uh, who else have we got on? Let's get through some of these questions then. So, Keith, question from Keith, Southern Ireland. Biggest bass on a law? Uh, not very big. I can tell you that much. I don't know if I've ever actually... I can't think of a time where I've caught a bass on a law and weighed it. But I'd say probably two or three pounds, maybe at most. Um, my biggest bass is only about four and a half pound. So... Yeah, I think on the laws, probably only two, maybe three pound at a touch. Um, but like I say, I want to get into and the last year. I feel like when I was looking back through some of my clips and stuff from last year, there was a lot of bait fishing, which I'm, I'm not knocking, but I do want to get out, um, get out and try a few, uh, few different spots. Yeah, that's it, Tommy Fairborn. That's the one. Thank you. Yeah, so Barmouth and Fairborn. Uh, in fact, Fairborn is probably where I had my best bass on the laws. Um, so, when are you coming Whitby Way? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I tried up Whitby Way a few times where I fished as far as um, Runswick, Runswick Bay. Um, I, I'm probably going to give Whitby a bit of a go over um, over summer with the laws. Like I say, I want to try and mix things up a little bit this year. I haven't done any light fishing, ras. I, I can't. I don't think I've caught a ras since I was about twelve. Um, so I want to target some a bit more species, uh, and mainly because I'm in Tommy Joe's species hunt as well, and I think I'm on six, five or six species so far for the year. So, um, so yeah, Whitby, um, Filey Brig, I want to get back to as well with the light setup because I think that could be really. Really good fun. Um, Cornwall, Wales. I, I've got loads of plans, to be honest. It's annoying me that I, well, I broke my toe. Obviously, I didn't intend on doing that. Um, but it is annoying me. I've got loads of plans for this year. And I'm in at the end of quarter one. And I've done next to none of them. But uh, hopefully, hopefully, now that we're moved and we're settled in here, I can do bits and pieces a bit easier in the weekends and stuff on this house. There's still loads to do. Um, but, uh, but hopefully time will get a bit freer and I can get out fishing a bit more. Um, right then. Now whip through some of these questions cause I'm losing, losing track. Michael best rig for this time of weather, this time of weather. Um, <laughs> I think this time of year, I'd probably just stick with a two-up clip down. Um, I fished almost entirely last year with Pennell rigs um, and just went after big fish constantly. Uh, and, yeah, I blanked a lot. But I think this time of year, like I say, it's it's that tricky point where the there are still, you know, whiting and stuff like that are knocking about. We do a good cod run up the east coast. Um, but two up flappers will fetch things like bass, you'll get flounder, dabs, all that sort of stuff. So I'd say two hook clip down rig to try and get a bit of distance and size one oh hooks, something like that, uh, and just go for it. Um, who else? Are you ever on a boat or oh, like me go green? Or oh, like me go green? I'm not sure what that means. Yeah. I'd love to be out on a boat. Um, charter fishing is expensive, though, these days. Um, I already have to do... If I was to go up to Whitby on a charter, it would probably cost me 30 or 40 quid's worth of fuel. Then you've got the bait. Uh, and I saw um, I saw a charter the other day. I've got a couple of spaces left. Uh, we're offering it for 100 quid a ticket for a day's fishing. Um, so it makes it a 200 quid day out for me, um, unfortunately. I have said though, uh, and I keep making sure, not sure if Sarah will be able to hear me or not, but I keep reinforcing the fact that we did agree if I hit 10,000 subscribers, I am entitled to buy a boat. I haven't got a clue how I'm going to do it yet. I've got no money saved or anything like that, um, but I am going to get a boat. I grew up, so my dad and a friend of his had boats. Um, we had, we well, Wayne had a Sea Hog Hunter and we had a Sea Hog Sea Lord, it was the uh, sort of 20 foot one 
Yeah. A bit of running water for you. Um, uh, so, yeah, I grew up fishing on boats, uh, grew up beach fishing as well. So it's something that I do want to get back to. Um, and I'm not sure if that is Jack getting out of the bath, actually. So apologies if you can hear all the running water in the background. Um, but, yeah, I want to get out on the boat more. It's just like I say, to get out chartering and stuff like that, it's an expensive do for me. Um, but if we hit 10,000 subscribers, I will find a way to buy a boat, even if it's a bucket and I have to row out. It'll have to be a big bucket, like, but, um, but yeah. Uh, so, yeah, best rigs for this time of year. Yeah, Michael, I like I say, two up flapper, mate. That's what I'd go for, I think. Um, Tommy, I think Tommy's dropped off, but he's off back to his fishing. Tom, great to meet you and your dad at the EOBC. Well worth the trip from Shetland. That's that's a long way to come just to see me, mate. But uh, thanks for thanks for coming over and chatting. I, I met quite a few people actually at the Euros. I wasn't going to fish it this year because I fished it the year before. The fishing's never. Every time I fished it, it's never been that great, um, as you'll have seen from last year's video. Um, and I am quite socially awkward, I think it's fair to say. So I wasn't going to fish it this year just because last year the fishing was shit. I went back to the weigh-ins. I dotted about on my own, feeling really awkward, uh, and then went back to the hotel and chilled out. Um, but this year, came up with my dad, as you'll have seen, um, met a load of folk. Obviously, I think a lot more people know me through the channel, um, and people come up talking to me. I find that I can't go and start a conversation. So, um, if I if I spoke to you, if I you know we had a conversation, I know I spoke to quite a lot of people. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I'm definitely going to do it again. Actually. Um, it's changed my changed my outlook on it completely. It was a lot more social this year, uh, and I really enjoyed it. So, yeah, if you did come over and say hello, thank you very much, and nice to meet you. And uh, hopefully, I'll see you out on the beaches somewhere else. Uh, David Ham, how are the boys? They are like me, overweight at the minute. Not not getting a great deal of exercise. Like I say, I've been burning the candle at both ends and in the middle at times. Um, hopefully, I'm going to get more fishing done and more walking. In fact, the I've got a couple of ideas for sessions where I could set the dogs away for the night um, and possibly fish a few places. So you might see the boys a bit more on the channel. Um, but otherwise, health-wise, they're good. They're just um, unfit, like uh, like the dad. Uh, and then, yeah, Jack's Jack's smashing it out of the park, really. Uh, like I say, I think he sounds like he's just got out of the bath, so he'll be going to bed in a minute. But um, he's doing really good. Uh, Mumtaz, hi, mate. I'm good. I'm very good. Shane's on. Holding this cod father. Yeah, all good, mate. Um, I've mentioned it on the on the channel. I mentioned it on the, the thing earlier. Um, a bit busy today moving house. So um, I'm sat here in the, the brand new garage that we've finished moving into about 20 minutes before I started this. In fact, I was two minutes late starting the live stream because I couldn't get my MacBook to connect to the new Wi-Fi. So, uh, so yeah. Busy, 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 busy. Hopefully, get out fishing more. Um, but otherwise, can't really complain, to be honest. Uh, do I fish much in Scotland, Graham? I don't, unfortunately. Um, I would love to. The I, I think what I want to do is I want to get out of the habit. I think I've fallen into the trap of I want to get when I, when you say fish Scotland, I instantly think of Sky, and Sky for me is an eleven hour drive in fact let me let me put on where did i fish last time um it was uh what was it called um the pier that we fished on directions oh there you go i'm exaggerating eight hours and 12 minutes the drive 452 miles so that's 16 hours of driving uh it's not the sort of thing you can do just for a weekend so it does take a little bit of uh, a little bit of planning however having said that there's obviously spots a lot further south that i could get to um a bit easier so uh, i would like to fish scotland a lot more maybe this year with the laws and stuff like that um, but yeah, I'd love to get out there because frankly, I think it's absolutely stunning. Um, 
and you know i think i did i did actually do a bit of recording when i was i was targeting skate and stuff but skate i know people put videos on of skate um and fishing for skate and it looks like you can just rock up cast the thing out and the ten a penny i can guarantee you it's not because i fished about eight or nine locations when we went on honeymoon last year uh, and didn't have a single bite um now i did have uh, quite a good session on the uh, spur dogs but skate they're they're a lot harder to get hold of than youtube would have you think having said that there's a lot of other stuff that you can go for up scotland and there's a lot of marks that uh, in southern scotland that i could try so it all depends where in scotland you fancy me fishing because for me to get like so up to sky it's, it's eight and a half hours each way um tackle graveyard mostin yeah don't i know it i think there's about a dozen of my rigs in there um from the last trip alone never mind all the ones before but I have seen some really nice fish out of Mostyn and I'm determined that I'm not going to leave empty-handed. I am going to keep going back there until I catch a fish. I don't care if it's a single fish, I am going to do it. I am going to get back there I'm going to nail a fish from a decent, nice fish from Mostyn. And when it happens, you'll probably be able to hear it from wherever you are in the UK. Uh, who else we got on? Gorin. Hi, mate. Mark. Evening. Uh, is is it sure to this year then Alex it is mate it is um, like I say I haven't got access to a boat um, and I do think I'm not going to say it's easy catching them I've had I've had taupe off the boat like I say when I was younger um, but a sure caught taupe oh excuse me uh, a sure taupe coat a sure caught taupe is definitely on the to-do list uh, do, do, do. have you tried kayak fishing or thought about doing it you know what i have um in fact just the other day i joined a facebook group called kayak fishing um because somebody advertised i think it was actually on the holden s holden s page that they were selling a kayak and i was like oh i'll have a look at that um i do fancy it the thing is i keep looking at sibs and i keep looking at kayaks i'm six foot four shy of 20 stone uh with bad knees so um yeah i don't know if i'd be comfortable on with me knee with my feet stretched out and i don't know if i'm sturdy enough or got the balance to stay upright on on a kayak but yeah it is something that i've looked into a lot plus the other thing like i say um safety is paramount and when you look at a kayak, so the, the one that I saw the other day was, I think it was 600 quid, which was a lot of money, but it came with oars, it came with a paddle set, it came with various bits and pieces, fish finder and all that sort of stuff. Um, but then when you look at that, and then I'd want, if I was going out on a kayak or, or a boat, to be honest, but it's, it's a little bit less of a risk. It's not something I'd see as an immediate purchase. Um, but... I'd want um, a radio, I'd want a GPS, I'd want, um, you know, the, the little personal EIPRs or EIPBs or whatever they're called these days, um, the locating beat and beacons. Um, I wouldn't want to go wearing a big buoyancy jacket either. I'd want like a slimline inflatable one. So by the time you've added all that up, you're almost into boat money. Um, and I just think I'd be a lot more comfortable, although they aren't anywhere near as... Um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, versatile. I couldn't, if I got a boat, I'd have to drive all the way to where I wanted to fish to then realise that the sea was crap and fish from the shore. Um, my thoughts with a sib or a kayak is I could quite easily load it onto the van with all the other gear. And then if I want to go off fishing, get there and it's not quite suitable, I can fish from the shore um, and it's not wasted a load of fuel towing a boat. But um, but yeah, I, I, have, I, I do keep looking at kayaks. I do really honestly keep looking at kayaks and sibs. Um, but then by the time I've added on all the safety gear and stuff, you're into boat money. Um, and I think I'd rather just buy a boat. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll have money sat spare in the bank and uh, it'll be it'll be a, one of those spot-by-purchase things where I'm like, yeah, I'll have that, mate. 
and then live to regret it. But uh, who else we've got on? Let's get through some of these comments then. Alan, uh, knowing what you know now in regards to commitment, expenses, and content creation, if you could rewind the clock, would you still do a YouTube channel and why? Absolutely, I would. Absolutely, I would. Uh, and the reason for it purely is I set up the YouTube channel because I wanted to encourage myself to get out more because I was struggling with mental health, um, struggling in work. I was busy all the time and doing things for me um, was always second fiddle. Uh, so, I, like I say, I grew up fishing with my dad, um, going out with him and his mates Looking back as a kid, I'd say we went almost every weekend. It almost certainly wasn't that, but it felt like we were always out fishing somewhere. Um, and I got to, well, I left school at 16, started an apprenticeship, um, started earning my own money, uh, got into women and beer like you do at that age. Um, and then, you know, if I wasn't working overtime at a weekend to pay for a lad's night out somewhere doing something else, um, then I was on a large night out somewhere. So I didn't get back into fishing until I was about, I'd say I picked it up again late 20s, maybe about 30. Um, but the last couple of years, every time I've gone out, I've realised how good it is for my mental health. And the reason I started the YouTube channel was um, not to earn money or anything like that, because honestly, don't believe the hype. It doesn't earn you a fortune um, like people would have you believe. But it's to, I feel an accountability and a responsibility to try and put content out now, which then forces me to get out. So like at the minute, um, to be honest, with everything that I've got going on, I'd say if I was to score myself, I'd probably put myself at a four or a five out of ten because I'm just knackered um, physically and emotionally. If I'd got a day where I hadn't got anything on, um i probably wouldn't go fishing i'd just sit on the sofa and feel crap about it um but the fact that i want to put videos out for you guys and so many of you guys um tune in on a saturday afternoon or a saturday evening um and watch the videos and subscribe and things like that and you know leave your lovely comments and stuff and support me um i feel an accountability to get out and go fishing and instantly that drive gets me out fishing and by the time i've set the gear up it's um yeah it, it works it's wonders so and i feel a lot better for it so um yeah it's a lot of cost it's a lot of commitment um and at times i do put myself under a lot of pressure but like the the whole reason i'm doing the live tonight is because i knew fine well there's not a cat in hell's chance i was going to get out fishing anywhere um but I still wanted to, you know, come on and talk to you guys and, and have a chat and, you know, answer some comments and do some Q&As and stuff. Um, so, yeah, it is a lot of commitment. It is a lot of cost, but I do enjoy it. And like I say, the main aim was to get me out fishing more and make sure that I do something for me. There's been times, and you'll probably see it in some of the videos, some of the videos I get very little content because rather than filming, uh, I just sit and chill out. Um, so some videos are shorter than others. Others, I'm really up for it and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, there's a bit of pressure to put content out, but I, I do mix and match it. Sometimes I just go fishing. Um, in fact, if I do get out fishing this week, I'll try and find – what I try and do is find somewhere where I can fish two marks so I know I've got a video in the bank. What I'll probably do is just fish one spot and maybe take some pictures and put it in another video um, because – I just want a couple of hours just chilling out uh, on my own. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, I'd do it again. Uh, it's not it's not, not for the faint-hearted. That it's, not, um, it's not a scary thing. It does take a lot of commitment to put a video out a week. Um, but for me personally, like I say, the reason I wanted to do it was to encourage me to get out fishing more, prioritise going out fishing more because it's good for my mental health. Um, and it does exactly that. So on that note, I'm going to move on from there. This is why I edit videos. This is why I don't live, because honestly, I sit for hours editing all the waffle out that I, I sit and talk to a camera. Um, so when you see a 20-minute video, there's probably a good four hours of footage of me just babbling absolute garbage. Uh, David, Bridlington, 70 quid bait included, tea and coffee. Well, I'll leave the tea, but, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing about charters, just going back to that, the other thing about charters is some skippers are funny about people filming on the boat. 
Uh, and also, I'm funny filming around other people because um, I get awkward. I get a bit of anxiety. Um, but some people just don't want to be on film, and that's fine. So charters, I think if I was going out on a charter boat, I would go purely for me. I probably wouldn't film it too much. Um, although I know I know some people who do film on charters um, and make some good good videos out of it. So, uh, George, afternoon. Just want to say a big thanks for all the hard work. Long drives that you put into the videos, you inspire me to get out and chuck line. Good. That's that's the other thing I wanted to do. Uh, like I say, fishing helps my mental health. So if I can inspire a couple of people to get out and go fishing, even better. Um, evening, David. Hi, Cameron. Um, Alan Hopkinson's inquiry. Uh, oh, yeah, I've just answered that about the YouTube. Um, yeah, absolutely, I'd do it again. But that's for my personal reasons. If What I would say, if you are thinking of starting YouTube to earn a fortune and quit work and just do fishing as a, as, as a job, I wouldn't bother. Um, it, it doesn't even... I'm at, what, 8,500 subscribers. Um, I'm not going to give you down to the pens, but it wouldn't even cover my fuel, um, to be honest, that... To, to get out fishing um it doesn't it's not a massive fortune so yeah if you're thinking by all means if if people want to start youtubes up everybody everybody these days has got a smartphone on them um that's what i did most of my recording on early on and then just stitched it together and i know quite a few make good videos just filming on a on a phone um so yeah by all means if you want to start it up the way i looked at it when i started up is film it stitch it together you can you can upload videos to youtube and keep them private if you've got a google account or if you're on youtube which i mean you all, obviously all are you anybody can go on and upload a video um you can keep it private and you can share the link to that video around your mates if you want some feedback and stuff um so yeah if there's nothing stopping you if you go out fishing regular and stuff like that crack on I'll give it a go um you get some flack in the comments at times and stuff like that, but uh, but yeah. So yeah, if anybody's wondering, is it worth setting up a YouTube channel? If you think you're going to get rich and famous off it, absolutely not. Don't do it for that. But if you want to have a crack at it, by all means, I I'd recommend it. I enjoy stitching videos together because I'm a bit of a nerd and I like playing around with things and seeing what different things we can do. Uh, who else we got? Eastbourne Fisherman on. Evening, Jason. Graham, you should come fish the west coast of Scotland. I'd love to, absolutely love to. Um, like I say, though, it's a good trek for me. It would probably mean a week's holiday, um, which I'm running out of. So we've got, I've already had a week off this year. I've got a week in Lanzarote. I've got two weeks in uh, Ireland. We're going to try and get away somewhere, just the three of us, um, sort of towards the end of the year. But again, that's probably looking at a, a UK break now. Um so maybe, maybe Scotland, maybe that could be the one. Um, Mumtaz, I think I've just uh, missed a load. Let me skip back off. Hats off for the hard work and commitment. Thank you very much. Um, well, and thanks to great YouTube anglers. Such amazing adventures. Where in Ireland are you planning in the camper? Uh no idea at the minute. That's another job that I need to get around to is putting an itinerary together. We're sailing from Cairn Ryan over to um, Belfast. And other than that, I know I want to be in uh, Donegal for the Donegal Rally on the 20th of June or whatever it is. Um, but other than that, I've got a completely open itinerary. Uh, and the fact that it is in Donegal, the rally is in Southern Ireland, I've got to get the dog's health care um, certificates or whatever they're called so i genuinely don't know i genuinely don't know i know i've asked a few people um i've spoke to a few folk uh about recommendations and stuff but i actually need to get an hour and just sit down and try and figure out where we want to go and what we're going to do uh the skater regarded as quickly get endangered you should drop the hint it won't be an easy target absolutely um i think i covered that earlier it's uh yeah, it's not an easy target. You watch these YouTube videos, and YouTube's pretty bad for that, to be honest. That's why I like to share um, blanks as well, because you watch, if you sit and watch YouTube, you could think, you watch some people's, you watch some channels, and it looks like you bag up all the time, but 
Um, I know of people who are fishing, you know, daily to put a, week, a video a week out and stuff like that. Um, and that's not me being bitchy, but um, there's a lot. YouTube's got a lot to answer for fishing wise um, and skate. Like I say, you see videos of people out catching these monster skate. You don't see the hours and hours and hours that they go for. Um, I could probably put a 20 minute video together of me um, fishing eight or nine different marks up in Scotland and not getting a single touch. Um, do, do, do. We all have nemesis marks. Yeah. Mostyn's, Mostyn's absolutely that one for me, George, but I am, I'm going to crack it. Uh, I don't care if I have to spend a year there, come rain or shine, hell and high water, I am going to get a decent fish from Mostyn. Uh, so apologies, you're going to have to put up with a few more blanks off there, I'm sure. Uh, what do you think the Akios Fury 435 and what we're about the tip when I cast? Um, I don't know what you are worried about in particular, David, on the 435. So I've got the 420s. I've got the standard tips, which I fished with probably for about 12 months, and I cast 7-ounce and bait with them. And, yeah, they they, they do suffer a little bit. Um, you don't quite get the, the recovery out of them with a massive bait like that, but they will they will sling good weights um, and baits. So, I mean, Dad's got the 450s with the standard tips, um, and, again, he can – he's – six seven ounces plus baits and he's not a big caster but um yeah so four three five spot on rod um if you've got anything if you've got anything particularly concerned about drop me a message um on facebook or um on instagram or wherever uh, or drop it in the comments further down and i'll try and answer it but yeah i wouldn't be worried about the the um as long as you're not trying to pendulum cast, I think that's the only thing I would say with the Fury. It's not designed for pendulum casting. Um, so if you're trying to swing, you know, you see people swinging the ledge round, 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 round behind them and then getting them gone, the, the Fury is not really built for that sort of stuff. Um, it is too soft for that, but a simple overhead thump um, or off the ground cast and the Fury is yeah, spot on. Like I say, I've done seven ounce and, and baits and it's, yeah, all right. It, it gets a little bit sluggish at that. It does struggle, but um, yeah, it's it's a good rod. I've had um, I've had all sorts of fish. In fact, I think um, I think I've got a clip somewhere of me snagged up on the uh, the Humber, um, and I was really, really putting my back into it, and the rod is bent right over. Um, so as long as you as long as you keep your casts nice and smooth, it'll chuck pretty much whatever you want to chuck. Um, Steve, mate, if I'm over Whitby Way, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, start posting maybe in the members area uh, on the YouTube. So there's a few few guys who've signed up to the membership and stuff. Um, I might start posting in there where I'm going to be fishing uh, and uh, on certain certain days anyway. Some days, like I said, I just want to get out and just disappear for a little bit on my own. Um, but yeah, I think I am going to start sharing or putting on. If you're on the Facebook group, by the way. Uh, the Awful Angler Facebook group, if you're on there, um, I'll probably put a post on there um, or I'll ask. I have been asking um, where I've gone to new places if people want to message me and recommend Mark. So if you're on Facebook or any of the other socials or on the membership channel on here, um, I'm going to start posting where whereabouts I'm fishing. If people want to recommend spots, um, that'll be appreciated. Evening, Ray. Have you, if you ever fancy some sessions around West Cumbrian coast, Southwest Scotland, give us a shout. Yeah, really appreciate that. Like I just said, um, I am going to start posting um, in the members bit or on the, the Awful Anglers Facebook group and stuff like that um, because, like I say, I've got, I've got there's, there's so many places that I want to fish um, and it's just time at the minute, to be honest. Uh, so, yeah, I'm definitely going to start trying to venture further afield. Um, Cumbria, Morecambe, uh, up and around that sort of area, Sillith Way. Uh, is where I was looking at the other day, actually, just for a, a two or three night break for me and Sarah to go away for a little bit. Um, and the rods would obviously have to be included uh, in the deal. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, like I say, I am going to start posting a little bit more. Uh, Mum tells what you're saying. Kayak fishing seems not very practical, to be honest. You're far too long. I, I could just put two together. I'd put my arse in one kayak and my legs in another uh, and duct tape them in the middle or something like that. But uh, but yeah, I 
I don't know, six foot four and 20 stone on a kayak in the middle of whatever sea I decide to disappear off just sounds like a bad idea to me. Um, good bad, bad fishing around Kirkuper. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that again. Southwest Scotland, Lucy Bay skate fishing in summer. Spot on. Cheers, Graham. Uh, Stephen, have you fished the Flyde Coast? I haven't, to be honest, at the minute. But like I say, I do want to try and get up that way um, and fish uh, a few different marks this year. Um, time dependent. See, so we've got Kirion on. Yeah, exactly. Fly coast, um, file coast rather, um, hands and rays. That's um, that's what I'm holding out for, really. Uh, there's a few good marks that I've been put onto up there, uh, but at the same time, like I say, place place this year, I think is uh, is the number one target. I want to try and get that knocked off. Uh, in fact, if I can head down, um, so I know Jason, the the Eastbourne fisherman. Uh, possibly go down and see him um, and go fish for the place down there. Um, yeah, like I say, Morecambe, Silleth, all those sort of places. Um, there's a fair few options, but yeah, definitely want to get to new new places. Um, Tom, my mental health is a lot better since I've been Facebook. Can't agree any more with you there. Uh, to be honest, um, I've started posting on Facebook more for fishing stuff, but before that, I only ever used it for groups. Um, I can't be asked. I'm not one of these people who posts what I had for my dinner or when next door neighbor's dog barks too long and posts all that sort of stuff. Um, I think Facebook, social media is a brilliant marketing tool and sharing things like pictures and stuff. But as for posting your dirty laundry on there, it's just not it. So, yeah, I'd completely... I think if uh, if it wasn't for the fishing um, and the fact that because I am so remote or like central, um, when I'm deciding where I want to go fishing, Facebook really helps me. Um, but other than that, I'd, I'd bin it off. Um, fishing with Ben. Afternoon, mate. How you doing? Uh, hope you're having a good day. I am now that I'm chilled out with a beer and talking to you lot and not moving and bloody flat packing and building furniture. Um, glad that's out of the way. I'm gonna start going live while fishing. I tried the other night after three minutes, I got scared of talking. To be honest, the the fishing live, um, I I'd like to do more of it, but then I I don't know. People are gonna have to let me know in the comments because when you fish live, I find I've done it a few times now, and I find that you sit. I mean, I've been talking away for fifty minutes now, replying to comments and talking to folk on here, which is exactly what I wanted to do tonight. Um, but if you're fishing, it can get hard, and I do feel like fishing live is either really boring because people are just watching your rod tips, um, or or you're just sat talking and you're not fishing. Um, Having said that, I have been looking at TikTok this week, trying to get down with the kids and whatnot. Um, and I've seen a few good channels over there that just seem to live stream on TikTok constantly. Um, and it blows my mind, some of the stuff on there. They're having, like, people are going live and having competitions between other people who are going live as to who's got the most supporters and all sorts of stuff that just it baffled me. Um, so I might give that a go. I was going to go live on TikTok tonight, actually, just to give it a go, see what it's all about. But apparently you need over a 1,000 followers or whatever they are over there. Uh, and I think I've got like 150 or something. So that went out of the window. Uh, who else we got? Got Kathy on. Hi, uh, nice to have you on. Um, that's my dad's other half, by the way, who lives over in Florida. So uh, it's, what, mid-afternoon over there, I think. Uh, Cameron Graham pulling in his mate Wayne and showing what good as well as affordable the Wilson Flyers are. Yeah, Wilson Flyers. The um, I do like that. Wilson Flyers seems really popular. Um, but I just I don't know. I like I say I grew up with Seahawks, um, and they were always really good. I obviously I was a kid then, um, but they they always see um. 
they were they were brilliant boats, really stable. We had three of us fishing in a little sixteen foot Sea Hog um, with a fifty horse Mariner on the back of it, uh, and it was stable, it was comfortable. Um, so I think I'm probably it's going to take a really good deal on something other than a Sea Hog to come up to tempt me away from them, just because I know them. Tom videos of folks blanking gets boring, just so they can make a few bob. Uh, yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, I, I'm not going to start putting loads of videos out there. Uh, that's just me blanking. And like I say, it is a few bob. It's nothing more than that. Um, like I say, for me to go out fishing, it's it wouldn't even cover my fuel. So YouTube, you don't make you don't make a killing out of it. Um, but there is a, there's definitely a balance of I don't want to put videos out every week where I'm blanking. But like I say, at the minute, the fishing's hard. If I was to go over on the East Coast, I could probably blank four out of five times. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to put four blank videos out. Um, I'd try my hardest if I can afford the fuel to get somewhere where I can put be decent videos out. But the one thing that I will say is, like I said earlier in the, in the stream, that YouTube is one of the worst places, or social media, really, because you only ever really see people with, you know, trophy fish or people who post videos where they've caught, you know, a dozen double figure cod or, you know, um, but some people go out fishing day in, day out to put those videos out. Um, so if you're sat and you're just watching that specifically, if you're new to fishing as well, what I don't want to do is make it look like if somebody has been out and they've blanked four times and they're new to fishing, they're crap at fishing and they should give up because sometimes that's just the way a cookie crumbles. Um, so yeah, it does get boring. I get bored of blanking. Um, and I'm not certainly not going to go putting loads of blanking videos out there. Um, but I, I do think it's important to show both sides of fishing. I would love nothing more than to go out and be able to catch monster fish for you every session. Um, believe you and me. Um, Charlotte Wilson caught her first conger eel yesterday on a full herring. Well done. Smashing. I tell you what, that's a nice fish, that. Um, and congers fight like no other as well. They're a weird, weird fight. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to Charlotte on her first conger. George, if you need a tip for getting the AHC for the dogs, then there are a few options that are a lot cheaper. Interesting, very interesting. Because, yeah, I mean, we've been out with our vet for years, and I think uh, to set them up, it was some like 250 quid. And then um, for the second dog, because once they're all set up and they got the account, it was something like another 80 quid per dog or something like that. So... Um, good fishing around Cairn Ryan. I'm hoping so because I'm we're sailing on the Monday, um, and I'm trying to convince Sarah to go on the Saturday and find somewhere nice to park up, ideally where we can park up, the dogs can roam around, and I can fish. Um, but yeah, I don't want to burn my bridges and um, fish too much before I get over into Ireland. Tom was on the skate today and not a nibble. What you ought to do, Tom, is put a video out blanking. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think, um, like I say, I think there's a good mix on YouTube where you have to show people that blanking is part of the game, especially if you're going to go after things like skate, because, um, yeah, there's plenty of videos out there where you can watch. So if you just want to watch somebody catch skate, then that's fine. But if you're after tips, it's not as easy as people uh, people make out. Q&A, do you use hooks? Absolutely not, mate. Why, why would I use a hook? Who uses those things? They're, they're dangerous to fish. You could put them in danger. Um, a few people have mentioned that, actually. In fact, that was, I think I cut it out of the European video. Um, the bloke next to me said, asked if I'd fish with hooks. Um, having said that, I don't think he caught much more than me either. Um, Paul, evening. Just turned 80 and no city fishing since 1970. Been resurrecting my gear, buying some new. Everything's changed. No panel rigs braid back in the day any advice any rig advice um rigs to be honest mate back in the 70s i bet you still caught fish keep it simple some of the i i've fallen into the habit i know people talk about dongle rigs and all that sort of stuff but it's easy to buy into the hype and a lot of fishing is about um, marketing you look at the carp angling scene like people have got thousands and thousands of pounds worth of gear it is marketing 
and marketing will always once they've sold you one thing they'll always tell you that the next thing's better than the one that they've just sold you um so yeah back in the 70s mate you'd still have caught fish i think the one thing that i would say is hooks have moved on quite away a lot of them are chemically sharpened these days um so you don't have to worry too much about um you know things like hooks being blunt and hook sharpeners you can sharpen them but chemically sharpened hooks these days are probably the only thing really um that is going to help you buy and uh, help you catching fish that's going to be any different from the 70s um reels have come on a long way but you can still fish with old reels you can still fish with old old gear um but yeah everything's it's improved a lot of stuff's improved don't get me wrong um if you've not had any fishing gear from the 70s rods will be completely different honestly completely different i haven't uh now i haven't got my fishing gear here yet it's still at the other garage um i could have showed you some of the rods that i grew up fishing with as a kid now they weren't expensive rods but they are like garden canes compared to the the Accios bits and pieces and the go uh, the any fish anywhere stuff that i've got today um but keep it keep it simple mate a two up flapper or a single hook flapper will still catch you a fish as long as you get the baits on there the one thing i would say is um good quality bait good quality bait uh, oh no they're gonna be a that'll teach me uh, i've got no cloths in here that'll have to soak into the floor um oh, i have good old fishing rag um yeah good quality hooks um and just don't spend a fortune if you're only just getting into it and you've turned 80 don't don't spend a fortune on gear like i say a lot of it is marketing um they're, they're, there's some incredible stuff out there uh, and come with incredible price tags um but i mean for me the akios fury is still the the undefeated rod i think um it's no you know century t1000 or anything like that but for 150 quid in fact i think um i think the akios superstore had a, a combo deal on for about 200 quid with a rod and a reel um it's 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 decent money don't get me wrong it's not 50 quid um but you'll catch you'll catch pretty much whatever you want on there just mopping my beer up oh i've got nothing but head now in there damn it um so yeah keep it simple mate don't don't spend an absolute fortune on stuff figure out what you like if you if you've not fished with sort of let's say modern fishing gear um just go for go for re reasonable budget stuff but a well-known brand um there's plenty out there to choose from uh, and just play about and see what see what takes your fancy see what suits you um yeah pull your rigs and tilt flappers you can't really go wrong with them um kayaks fun to fish off but can be scary for the first out and had some good days off fishing on them and some blanking days yeah i think um well i've said said all i need to fish, say on kayak fishing i watched i subscribed to some really good kayak fishing channels um and it looks brilliant is it for me i'm not too sure um vernon's on great videos sharing your frustration Yeah, I think I know. I know out of towners get a lot of flack on a lot of the Facebook groups um, about coming and poaching. But when you when some people are forced to fish non-local spots, like say Derby, Sheffield, you haven't got a local beach really, um, so you have to you have to move about and you have to go and find different spots. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, to be honest, it's a love-hate thing for me. It's brilliant because it it means two hours from where I am, and I can be on the Holderness, I can be on the Mersey, I can be uh, at the top of the Bristol Channel. Um, but three hours can definitely get you places like Anglesey, it can get you up to Morecambe, uh, it can get you up as far as um, Blythe. I think Blythe only took me three hours to get up there, three and a bit hours um so there's loads of places you can get to it just takes a little bit more planning so um so yeah it's uh frustrating at times if you when you see people the one that gets me the most is when you see people who oh i got home from work early uh thought i'd nip out for an hour there's no way i could just nip for an hour but an hour i'd get halfway to the venue and have to turn around and come back 
Um, but I do enjoy I do enjoy being Derby based. I think I'd get bored if I lived in Hornsey and I was just fishing Hornsey all the time. Um, there's only one place I think I wouldn't get bored of fishing, and that's Anglesey. I've got to say it. Um, Anglesey has got so many different marks that you can fish all within half an hour. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's really good. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a love hate thing. It's I enjoy it. Um, how do you not tie with thick gauge, high poundage line? Just getting into sea fishing from coarse fishing, struggling with the line thickness, fed up paying for rod licenses. I don't blame you. I I actually had a go at pike fishing the other week. Well, I say the other week, just before Christmas. Um, and yeah, paid for a rod license and then got down there and the guy wanted a tenner for me to fish for the day as well. So um, I don't blame you at all on that one. Uh, it's not export. It was Madry, but it's now just Throff because I've dropped it on the bloody floor. Um, but the, some knots, some knots are better with high gauge or thicker line. Um, personally, I, I really like the uni knot. Um, look that one up. In fact, I'll do. I'll try and do a couple of shorts or something when I've got the garage set up a little bit more. Um, I want to do a few more like knot tying stuff um, and rig building bits and pieces. But the uni knot uh, for me is really good because you make the knot. Have I got some line? I've got to have some line knocking about somewhere. Um, in fact, I have there. Look, see through there. Uh, let me. Bear with me. There we go, this will do. Right. So I'll do a really quick one, so I'll do it around my finger. Um, if I can, show it you. Pull that down. So basically, the, the uni knot, what you do is you've got your loop there, which let's pretend it's going through a swivel. You make another loop like so so you've got your swivel over here and then you basically tie it back through that loop and the thicker line what i would say is the thicker line the less times i go through that loop where are we so i've only gone through that twice i always try and go through it three times but as you pull that down look the thing that i like about the uni knot is it pulls down onto itself so you make the knot where are we you make the knot the knot actually sits this side. So I used to use a half blood knot, but the the knot is, how do I explain it? The knot is, so that essentially is your knot there, right? Where are we? There, look. Um, and that will pull down, I'm not gonna do it on my finger, but that'll pull down really nice and neat. And I've never had a uni knot fail on me. Um, but yeah, essentially, union knot, and then just go through that loop less on the thicker line. If it's thin stuff, like if I'm fishing with 20 pound mono, um, I tend to um, go through it sort of seven or eight times. But on the big heavy gauge stuff, the thicker stuff, all I do is three times, um, and then it'll pull down really nice and neat. So um but yeah definitely play about with different types of knots um because some knots will be a lot easier on big thick gauge line uh peter dilks we'll be doing more fishing in the northeast it was great to see you up here keep it going mate uh yeah well short answer um enjoyed it like i say the traveling is a bit of a, a killer but um but i think um there's definitely opportunities to go up there on the laws at some point in summer um uh there's there's a few places up there that a lot of people are recommended to me that i just can't ignore so um so yeah i definitely want to get up there and fish up there a bit more um what else is there anybody that i've missed on here is there any questions just a quick hello from andy uh hope the new house is coming on all right it's it's livable let's put it that way um yeah we've moved in today uh, I got. I finished doing the rewire and got that all signed off on Wednesday. So it's uh, well. We still haven't got lights upstairs. I need to wire them up, finish them off. Um, but that's a job. We'll 
that's probably a Tuesday job. I think uh, now we're in, we're going to have tomorrow just chilling out, relaxing, um, putting a few bits and pieces away, tidying up a little bit. There's still loads to do, but now that we're in, hopefully I can just drop onto it um, an hour of the evening and stuff like that, rather than having to come and do it all separate. Um, summer is the long blanking sessions for me. More enjoyable when you do get the big take. Is that summer is a bigger blanking session? Is that because you target bigger fish on the kayaks? Or how does that work? Because I always thought summer, like certainly in Anglesey, when I used to fish Anglesey on the boats, summer was like red hot. You couldn't not catch fish. You got pollock, you got wrasse, bass, um, all that sort of stuff. You got loads of stuff. And another question for you then, on the kayaks, do you ever go after things like taupe? Because I watch I watch a lot of guys over in places like Costa Rica um, and places like that out on kayaks. I wouldn't be able to not have a live bait out off the back of the kayak. And that's probably a reason why I shouldn't get a kayak. Um, you'd see me getting hauled off to bloody France somewhere um, by a bloody thresher sark or something like that, trying to stop that. Uh, it's not export. It's Madri. Um, I think we've already done that. Brendan, Anglesey, 100%. Yeah. Uh, this. It's the one place, I've said it time and time again, um, it's the one place I could quite happily live um, for fishing. The The only thing is there's not much industry, so I'm a project manager by trade, um, in well, engineering project manager, um, and there's not a great deal over there for me to do work-wise. Yeah, now you're making me feel jealous, mate. Live on the seafront and nip down for a quick session here and there. <laughs> Whatever, mate. Whatever. Nobody, nobody wants that in their life. Michael, I'm going to be on... I am going to come up to the file. Um, I am absolutely 100% going to come up. Uh, like I say, if uh, I, boy, I would, mate, I'd just get towed out constantly because I'd be too stubborn as well just to snip it off. I'd just see where I end up landing it. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely want to get up on the field. Like I say, hopefully this week, hopefully this week, I want to get out somewhere. I need uh, need my dad to pick me up and take me somewhere, I think, drive me somewhere. Uh, unless anybody fancies picking me up from a train station, uh, it'll have to be an accessible mark. Um, I haven't. Uh, I've got a boot. Let me show you. So I've got this contraption that I've got to wear for the time being um, just to stop me putting weight on the front of my foot. Uh, to be honest, I'm walking around in flip-flops half the time at the minute just because my hips are starting to hurt having that two-inch wedge. Um, but hopefully it'll not be long before I can start driving again um, and we can get out a little bit more. But, yeah, I think me and my dad were on about trying to get out at some point this week. So hopefully next week I'll have a video somewhere for you doing something uh, that's not in the garage um, and it'll be a little bit more entertaining, hopefully with some fish as well. Uh, but other than that, where else what else could we do could do could do a yeah if somebody fancies picking me up from a train station and taking us we can go fish on a mark somewhere well i wonder i wonder how far you could get let's have a quick look shall we uh what do i want train line split my fare that's normally the cheapest in tip for train tickets let's have a look live shall we so from derby station to where could we go? We could go Brighton on the place, actually. Uh, leaving on, let's go for Thursday. Leave after 6 a.m. And return leaving after 7.30. That should get me a good fishing session, shouldn't it? Let's have a look. This might be a ridiculous idea. Now, 
no results. Oh, not be doing that then. Why is that? Leave after uh, arrive before. Let's try that. See if I've gone a bit late on the departure time. Unless no, no, no trains are coming up, so I ain't going to Brighton this week. That's the other problem. Is half the blue train line train tracks have all got closures on, or this, that, and the other, or strikes, or something like something like that. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, if if Dad fancies driving somewhere, we can get out somewhere this week. Or uh, keep your eyes on Facebook or on the on the YouTube posts and stuff like that. I might uh, might book a random train t- ticket somewhere and try and uh, just get all my stuff on uh, on the train. Sarah, how long are you going to be? It's a good question. That have you got my dinner done? Have I got tea? Or are we ordering tea? What are we doing? How long have we been on? Oh, an hour, over an hour. Uh, no more than 20 minutes, I think. Um, people are going to get bored of me pretty quickly. Um, so go on, give us a fish. Yeah, like I say, Michael, if um, I, I am going to start posting, I think, in the members area and um, or on the, on the Awful Anglers group, um, and let people know where I'm out fishing um, from time to time. So, um, yeah, keep your eyes posted on socials, mate. Alec, all right, nice to see you. Good to see how that blue coat. I know it's there, look, hanging up behind me. Oh, that side. There we go. Yeah, that that blue coat, that one right there, need binning. It's crap. Um, although I, I do keep saying I'm going to bin it and every time it sits there and it dries out and stuff and then it gets to the next session and I still haven't found anything to replace it yet but hopefully now that the weather's getting a bit better I can get away with just going out in a hoodie and me, uh, me smock so I think that's it on the questions I think I've covered everything Oh dear, that's going to make me. That's going to get me in trouble. That. Oh, as soon as I finish this beer, we'll be done. I dropped half of it on the floor. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. Is that when my dinner's ready, or is that when I'm off? What? What are we? I don't even know what we're doing for dinner. What are we doing for dinner? Are we ordering something? Have we put some in? I'm not even sure. I don't even know if we've got food here. I brought a beer. That's that's what I brought. Sunridge minus ten coat. Yeah, uh, Sunridge stuff. I never. I I don't know. Uh, it's never really. Ticked, ticked any boxes for me. It's sort of dinners in seven minutes. Oh, there we go. Sorry, guys. Seven minutes now. I'm out of here. Um, but uh, but yeah, Sunridge. I'm, I'm not sure the Fladden stuff. I had a Fladden um, survival or buoyancy flotation suit when I was a kid for out on the boat. And honestly, I fished in that in all weathers from the age of about twelve to sixteen. Uh, in fact, I think my dad's still that bright yellow thing. That my dad was fishing out in um, in the Euros, um, so yeah, I think some of the survival stuff is worth a look at. Um, the Sunridge though has never really, it's never a brand that sort of appealed to me. I don't know why. First night in any ass, it is. <laughs> Yeah, Christian in the bed. We've had a new mattress as well. And the only thing I'll be doing tonight is sleeping. I am dead to the world. No promises tonight whatsoever. Absolutely none. Evening, Alan. 
still got a fair few on there, which means that people can't be that bored of talking, listening to me yabber on. Um, I tell you what, let's get should we um, let's get the rest of the going. Let's have a look at the rest of this because it's it's bugging me. In fact, where's my phone? I'm gonna have a look and make sure I've actually ordered the right rod because, like I say, I'm not I'm not particularly follically blessed, but. Um, there are hairs on my head that are thicker than this rod. Where are we? Orders. Your orders. Do, do, do. It's, it's definitely the right one. 0.6 to 8 grams black rock ultra light. The biggest fish I've landed. It's a bit... Bit of a leading question, that. So, the the biggest fish, officially the biggest fish that I've landed was a blue shark in Portugal. Um, but, having said that, it was a chartered boat where the, I'm quite happy to hold my hands up and say there was a lot of help. There was a lot of help from the crew. Um, so, I don't really, I don't really count that one. I mean, look at how thin this thing is. Like, I can't even see. Where's the camera? Right, look at the, the hole to put the tip of the rod in. It's ridiculous, this thing. Um, so, yeah, a £200 blue shark was my biggest. Um, but I, I can't claim that because there was so much um, help put in by the crew. Uh, my second biggest one was a £40 um, mahi in Mexico. Um, which again the crew gaffed it, but that was that was a lot more of me playing the fish and, and things like that. Um, so that was good fun. My biggest short caught fish. Um it's probably a smooth hound that I had last year. Because I have got a sneaking suspicion that that was double figures, but I never weighed it. So officially, my biggest fish is a seven pound. Ray from the shore. Um, now, again, I had bigger fish when I was a kid, but I can't really remember them, and I can't remember weighing them, so I don't count them. Um, so I've had things like tope off the boat. I've had um, nice congers and all that sort of stuff. Oh, this thing is ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, um, so officially, and I, I, I only really count since I started the channel up as well, because that's when I started fishing again in anger. Um, this thing is ridiculously thin. It, I mean, it's a nice looking rod. It's a lovely looking rod. Um, so yeah, officially uh, a seven pound, seven and a half pound ray is my biggest fish. Oh, I tell you what, I'm looking forward to fishing with this. This is ridiculous. Look at how small the tip is on that. That is crazy. Wait till we get a mackerel on that. 0. 0.6 grams this goes down to. Look at that. Look at bending that. Yeah, uh, LRF fishing. Spoiler alert, there's going to be a lot more of that this year. And I don't even know where that tip goes into. This rod. This rod's going to get snapped to me. Honestly, I mean, look, just bring it back so you can see it against the side of my face. Look how thin that tip is. Yeah, I can't see it lasting long, but really good looking rod. Steve from Chesterfield. Hi, mate, just up the road. Literally about 10 minutes up the road these days. Um, what else we got? Wait, Alex, I'm getting another beer. Get me one. I haven't got another beer. More well, that beers. I dropped off mine on the garage. You'll get sprats on that rod. That's what I'm hoping for, right? So there's a there's a, a channel that I've started following. I only found him this last week, um, and I, I don't know him, but is I really like his I really like watching his videos. It's it's literally LRF and HRF. 
uh, and he fishes all over the place. And some of the tiny little micro species that he catches, um, and like I say, being in being in Tommy Joe's species hunt this year inspired me to um, to go after some of the smaller stuff again. Um, trying to put this way without breaking it, uh, but like I say, sprats, um, gobies, all that sort of stuff. In fact, I nearly ordered some size 22 hooks the other day, which are probably about as thin as this rod tip. Um, so, yeah, if, you, uh, if you're all up for it, I want to go after some, some tiny, tiny, tiny stuff. Um, just because I think it'll be really fun, really cool little sessions, really. Uh, and it also means that I don't have to take all, like if we go away to the seaside for the day, um, let's say Bridlington, Bridlington Harbour, somewhere like that. Um, for a day out, I can just take literally a rod that will fit in the glove box and a tiny little reel. And we'll see what we can catch. But I wasn't quite expecting it to be that small. 0.6 grams is, is tiny, but I don't know. it's worth subscribing just to see how quickly I break this rod because it's it's wafer thin, wafer wafer thin. I'm going to put it back in uh, back in the tube that it came in, just so it doesn't get not knocked to pieces. There we go. It's safe. Right. I think on that note, have you fished Fuller Street or Suggets Lane? Whereabouts is that? You reckon I'll get two videos out of that rod? I think the first video I'll, I'll snag up and snap it in two. Grimsby, no, I haven't. Um, in fact, I don't think I've done any fishing Grimsby way. Don't need very tiny hooks for the LRF. Lots of tiny rats and scorpion fish and greedy, greedy and will take quite large hooks. Yeah, they will. Um, and I remember fishing for rats and stuff like that um, when I was a kid, just with little beach casters, um, literally dangling sort of size one, size two hooks um, on a, a sort of uh, drop shot type setup over rock marks and stuff like that. But um, I am intrigued. I am intrigued and I want to go after some like really tiny stuff. I want to see just how small I can catch. So whilst, yeah, I don't need tiny hooks. It's like you're saying you don't need big hooks for big fish. Um, I don't need it, but I'm, I'm intrigued. I want to give it a go. So uh, there will be some videos coming up of that at some point. And I think on that note, folks, I am going to call it quits. Um, what time? What time was it? Where's Sarah's comment? Do, do, do. Does it tell me what time she commented? Well, I can put user in timeout. <laughs> Sarah, you've gone in timeout. Right. Sarah's going to let me know if she's still on, whether I've got dinner on the table or not. If dinner's on the table, I'm out of here. And if she's not logged on and she's not still watching, then. Uh, No, Sarah didn't tell me it was bedtime at all. Don't start things like that, because frankly, not yet. Oh, ooh, there we go. So you've got a couple more minutes. Sarah didn't tell me it was bedtime, because nine times out of ten, I'll sit watching YouTube. I'll end up in a YouTube hole and just sit and binge YouTube on, on the sofa. Um, but if Sarah says it's dinner time, I, I'll definitely, definitely leave you lot for food. There is no question about that. Bedtime can wait, but food is a whole other ball game. I would, I would have another beer, but I don't think I haven't got any. I brought this, I brought this from the other house, and it's gone. So I don't think I've got any more beers. I think I'm all beered out. That was the one and only. I don't really keep beers in the house. I don't really drink. I'm not a drinking kind of person. Um, I went out on Friday with a mate and that's probably the first time I've been out drinking for 
maybe even this year, actually. Um, so, yeah, it's not a teetotal thing or anything like that. I just tend to stick to water. Um, there's some in the kitchen. Well, come on, then. Crack on. Does does that window that window opens? There's a window from the there's a window from the new garage into like the dining room. I make a really really handy serving hatch that would for a cold beer. If I can get at it, I don't know if I can get at it. It's too much crap in the way. Yeah, come on, Sarah, fetch me a beer. Fetch me a beer. Be a, be a good one. Oh, oh, that's subtle. I've just noticed that as well. I noticed how, let's see, let's scroll back up through the comment. Oh, oh, there was a shadow then. Is that my dinner turning up or is that a beer turning up? Let me scroll back through the comments. I just want to, I just want to fact check something. Where's Sarah's first comment? Let me have a look. Oh, I think that's my dinner actually. Yeah, there you go. Sarah's first comment. She was still down as Sarah Wharton. I notice you've changed it now. It's about time. Is that? Let me just get this door. It's my food. Wait there. Hello. Hi, mate. All right. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, cheers, cheers, buddy. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you later, mate. <laughs> well, Sarah might have a beer, but I've got food. <laughs> oh. So, folks, on that note, I think it looks like I'm going to have to go and fetch my own beer, and uh, I'm going to take the food in. So, thanks, everybody, for joining. And, uh, well, I'm going to go and film my face. Cheers, everyone. See you later.